Tonight, Broken Hill firefighters kept busy over the weekend. And Spencer Gulf residents kept on their toes as wild weather lashes the region. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening, everyone. It's been another busy weekend for firefighters in Broken Hill, battling a number of blazes under challenging conditions. A home was destroyed yesterday afternoon, while a fire at the local rubbish dump continues to burn. Flames leap from a rubbish pile as a single bulldozer attempts to create a fire break. But the battle is lost. Within minutes, smoke pours into the sky from the Willis Street Waste Facility. It was challenging conditions. It was really hot, really windy, and it's a big area where the tip is. Crews rushing to the scene at midday on Saturday, the start of two days firefighting and monitoring. On and off yesterday, uh, I think Council have a, a person out there manning it all the time. Some areas of the tip reopen this afternoon, but authorities say the fire will smoulder for some days. And as one emergency continued, another began. A house on Gaffney Lane bursting into flames on Sunday afternoon. A very small lane, very limited access, um, very hot conditions. It was fully involved when we arrived. Crews managed to save neighbouring properties, but the home was destroyed. Thankfully, nobody was injured. Got told that there could possibly be an occupant inside. Um, that was quickly um, acknowledged and they were fine. Police returning to the scene today. The exact cause of the fire is unknown. And while our firefighters pushed through the hot weather, their efforts were hampered by onlookers. It was just chaotic with people trying to sticky beak and it just does not help us at all. We really, really, really ask that they keep away. Lachlan Eater, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Upper Spencer Golf has copped a drenching, with hot and humid conditions bringing thunderstorms to the area. Authorities are tonight still on high alert, with several warnings issued for the region. From the scorching heat to wet and stormy conditions, it's been a wild 24 hours for the Spencer Gulf. Heavy rainfall lashing the region this afternoon, bringing relief from the heat wave. This sort of atmosphere where you've got sort of tropical type uh, uh, scenario there, um, rainfall totals can be uh, uh, are very sporadic. The Bureau of Meteorology issuing a flood warning tonight for the North East Pastoral District, Flinders Ranges and northern parts of the Mid-North. There is the potential there for uh, uh, getting those falls of uh, 20 to 40 millimetres and possibly uh, some local falls could be higher than that as well. Meanwhile, the State Emergency Services says crews remain on high alert, bracing for rainfall that may impact road networks and properties. So we position some um, rescue crews and some assets um, up in that area um, overnight, just in case anybody does get uh, stuck in, in floodwaters, um, so we're able to assist them. A complex trough causing these conditions, with residents asked to remain vigilant. Making sure your gutters and downpipes are clear, um, that you trim trees and branches uh, that could fall onto your, your home or your property, um, and making sure that really your property is ready uh, to withstand any impact Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Meanwhile, South Australia sweltered through its hottest weekend this summer, with temperatures soaring into the mid-40s. The region escaping relatively unscathed from any fires, despite the severe conditions. Bracing for a hot weekend, residents were prepared for a scorcher, and that's exactly what they got. Temperatures soaring to a blistering 45 degrees in Port Augusta on Sunday. Well, that was sort of the hottest day that we've had up through that area um, uh, for this summer, and that certainly was the case in Adelaide, but uh, yeah, probably likely up through, through that area as well. Many heading to the beach to cool off while others made tracks for Port Lincoln's National Park. The city's pontoon proving a popular choice with the kids. An overnight cool change bringing a much needed reprieve. There's been a, a change sort of move through and uh, as we move into the, the days to follow uh, through that, uh, that northern part there, uh, maximum temperatures are probably going to be sort of in the, the low 30s. Despite the conditions, the region escaped relatively unscathed on the fire front, but we're being warned to prepare for another hot spell. 
there will be some increase towards the, the end of the week, maybe up into the sort of middle 30s type range, but uh, not expecting uh, to be getting into, into that, uh, any of that sort of extreme heat type range for this week. Nathan Regg to 7 Spencer Golf News. A 26-year-old truck driver has been reported after police allegedly discovered straps were holding the steering wheel in place. Just after 4pm on Thursday, a B-double stopped at the border checkpoint at Udlawira. Members of the public approached police, advising them the vehicle was travelling erratically on the barrier highway. On inspection, they allegedly found a ratchet strap holding the steering column together. The vehicle was defected and towed for further examination. While a city council has confirmed the AFL pre-season match scheduled for Bennett Oval has been cancelled. The league has cut the community series back to just one round, which will be played between March 3rd and 7th. Port was to have played Carlton at Bennett Oval on Sunday, February 21st. The AFL says the decision will protect players and reduce travel during the pandemic. Council CEO Justin Common says while disappointed, they understand the reasoning. Still to come tonight, calls grow for better inspections along the Goida Highway and regional South Australia in the middle of a tourism boom. Welcome back. A Northern Territory man has lost his licence after allegedly driving nearly 50 kilometres over the speed limit near Port Pirie on Friday. Just before 6am, a member of the public alerted police to a speeding motorcycle travelling north on the Augusta Highway. Highway patrols detected the vehicle travelling 149 in a 100 zone. The 19-year-old was also fined for excessive speeding and issued nine demerit points. Traffic on the Goida Highway has been forced to slow down after extreme hot weather conditions damaged recent road upgrades. Fed up by the ruined maintenance, the local state MP wants better road inspections to be conducted. Over $3 million worth of upgrades now ruined. Questions are being raised across the Mid-North on whether more inspections should be in place. I had identified it to the Minister and uh, some issues were identified with the resealing or the sealing of the road itself. My question is to the Minister, um, why wasn't that picked up in the original uh, inspection before it was handed across from the contractor to the State Government? Jeff Brock says it's not only a blow to the taxpayer's hip pocket but also to the motorists travelling along these roads. So we've now got tar, hot tar, embedded on their tyres and, on, and also on the uh, chassis of their vehicles, which now is including, uh, incurring uh, thousands of dollars worth of uh, cleaning for those trucks. In a statement, the Transport Department says these works will be monitored during a 12-month defect liability period and this incident was due to extreme hot weather conditions. It also says all roads are regularly inspected on a fortnightly basis. The REA welcomes investment in regional roads but says the errors should be fixed as soon as possible. All works are done to the correct standard first time is so important so we don't want to see sections which have had money spent on them recently having to be revisited. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. South Australia's tourism sector is breaking pre-COVID records, with new figures showing the state government's travel voucher program is benefiting regional operators. However, the opposition says the scheme should be extended. After a long winter, our region's hotels and caravan parks are having a summer to remember. Occupancy rates outside Adelaide are breaking records. It showed occupancy in regional South Australia had reached uh, 60%. This was the highest December on record, um, and it's an increase uh, on December 2019, uh, which was at 55%. The Great State Travel Vouchers program receiving credit for the boost. Tourism Commission data shows locals have injected more than $10 million into regional economies as they turn their eyes to touring around their home state. People are, are taking this opportunity to explore our great state and that has a longer term opportunity because what it means is people will have been to areas and regions they haven't been to. Local operators say while business has picked up, the changing coronavirus situation is still creating a level of uncertainty. This is tracking fairly well at the moment. Uh, we're probably a little bit busier now than what we'd normally be uh, but the thing you've got to have in your back of your mind 
that changes very, very quickly. As we see with the last shutdown, within 48 hours, you go from maybe 89% occupancy down to 0% occupancy. Meanwhile, Labor is calling for the state government to roll out a third round of vouchers that would help struggling tourism businesses benefit from the program. The concern is how many of the vouchers have actually been taken up and it's only about 24% in this second round. Katrina Mosson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Final preparations are being made across the region for Australia Day celebrations tomorrow. Port Augusta Mayor Brett Benbow is inviting locals to Gladstone Square. Australia Day Ambassador and former resident Vicky Wellgraven will be a special guest at the event. We're uh, a very vast uh, multicultural community um, and we're very proud of that. So it's a good opportunity to people connect, enjoy themselves and understand what Australia is and be proud of it. A free breakfast will be provided, followed by the citizenship ceremony, Australia Day Awards and the inaugural Thong Toss competition. Stay with us, Tumby Bay preparing for another busy year. And we will review the weekend's local cricket action. Thousands of South Australians will flock to Tumby Bay as the town prepares for its first COVID safe festival. At the Bay Markets teaming up with Colour Tumby and the Adelaide Fringe for what they say will be an unmissable weekend. A burst of colour coming back to Tumby Bay. It's going to be a really, really huge thing for Tumby Bay, I think. The small town preparing for a jam-packed March-long weekend, with four major events being rolled into one big festival. The exciting part about it is it's a collaboration of a number of events. From the Roadrunners Car Club to the markets at the Bay, the iconic Colour Tummy Festival and even the Adelaide Fringe, it'll all be brought to Air Peninsula's doorstep. We can't do events like we used to, um, so that's having a lot of people in a small space. Um, so yeah, we did just reimagine that. Instead, the events will be spread out across the town with the digital mobile app to guide you through the festival. It has an, a map embedded so you can follow the Tumby Trail, visit all of our market stall holders, all of our amusements, our events, um, some art installations and of course the Colour Tumby Street Art Festival. It's a major morale boost for organisers following a chaotic 2020. It certainly was a tough year last year. that We had to um, postpone our event two weeks out from from the actual event. In a desperate attempt to not repeat history, organisers are covering all bases with COVID check-ins and spread out markets. We're really excited to be able to bring something this year. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Children across the country are squeezing in their last few days of fun before school goes back on Wednesday. Port Perry's Little Beans Play Cafe is busier than ever, following a tough year of restrictions for the family business. It may be a Monday morning, but Little Beans Play Cafe is busier than ever. Children are jumping for fun with many enjoying their favourite activities. Uh, I like doing tricks on the trampoline, it's pretty fun. Building things and making a hideout. It follows a tough few months for this local business, one of the last to open following coronavirus restrictions. We reopened after four weeks of closure uh, and families were just coming through the door. We've got the QR code here, the sanitizer at the front door and people sign in as normal. Owners are welcoming the buzz with kids parties also booking out. We've been really busy. Um, what I love about school holidays is how busy we are and I'm able to give the staff extra shifts. School goes back on Wednesday, but there's still smiles amongst this group. Get to have a new teacher and we get to learn new stuff. On a personal level, as a parent, I'm almost ready for school to go back because the juggle of having children and a business to run seven days a week is a bit difficult. But the cafe will still be keeping some little ones occupied. Quieten down a little bit, which I know that some families are waiting on. They like it a little bit quieter here during school term hours. They bring their little ones in during school hours. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Turning to sport now, and while the weekend's scorching conditions forced many local cricket matches to be abandoned, the competition really heated up for those games which did go ahead. Here's Lachlan Itter with this week's Cricket Wrap. A 30-year rivalry was reignited over the weekend, with Broken Hill taking on Red Cliffs at Almer Oval. 
What used to be an annual tradition returned as a one-off grudge match. The home side batted first, hoping to make the most of their 40 overs in searing 40 degree heat. It was a shaky start with Matthew Attard out for a duck, while Tobias Hack made just six before being bowled out. Cody Howard joined him on the bench next ball. Matthew Reeval proving invaluable with the bat, bringing some stability to the innings. Smashing the first six of the match and adding 29 runs to the scoreboard. Wickets kept falling with three more batsmen making ducks. In the end, it was a low scoring affair for Broken Hill, all out for 81. However, the bowlers stepped up. Runs from Shannon Bowen, Travis Landles and Lachlan Road weren't enough for Redcliffs. The visitors not surviving the full 40 overs, falling just 11 runs short in reply after 23 overs. In the Barrier District League, it was the final round of the 2020 competition. Daniel Milne got West off to a flying start in their match against North. However, West ending on just 9 for 79, North chasing that down with five wickets to spare. While at Jubilee Oval, Central batted first, making 94 off their 20 overs. It was a case of so close and yet so far for South. Needing 18 off their last four overs, they fell short by three runs runs. David O'Malley got three for seven, while Jared Paul scored 26 not out. Only the games played in Wyala went ahead in round two of the Upper North Super League, with others cancelled due to the heat. South Augusta's eight for 137 was enough for them to take the points against Rupina, while Central Wyala had an easy win over Corn. And that's it for local cricket. I'll be back tomorrow night with the rest of the weekend sport. Stay with us after the break. A taste of Mardi Gras coming to Broken Hill. And Alex Sykes will have the latest weather forecast. Hello again. Some of the Broken Hill Festival's most loved performers will be representing the city at Sydney's Mardi Gras. The Glambastadors will be hosting shows, events, competitions and workshops at the Imperial Hotel. All of our festival Glambastadors, our queens representing the festival will be down there. Um, so, you know, give them a snippet of what they can catch at, at, our, at our event. The Divas have a busy calendar with 15 events throughout the week. Organisers hope their performances will inspire people to travel to the Broken Hill Festival in September. Time to check what we can expect on the weather front this week. Here's Alex Sykes. Thanks, John. Conditions were hot and humid throughout the region today. From 3pm, Port Augusta had rain at a top of 38 degrees. Similar conditions for Port Piri with 37 and rain in Clare also with a maximum of 33. Looking across the rest of the region now, Cooper Pedy had showers in 37. Broken Hill and Whaler both had tops of 36. Cooler in Port Lincoln with 22. Kadena reached 26. And Adelaide had some afternoon rain with 34 the maximum there. Taking a look at the satellite image now. Cloud crossing the far southwest with a weak upper level trough, not rain bearing. Skies are largely clear elsewhere under high pressure and a dry and increasingly hot air mass. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. North to north easterly winds reaching up to 20 knots in the afternoon. Seas to reach just above one metre with south to southwesterly swells around one metre. Conditions cooling down tomorrow, mainly fine in Port Lincoln with 23 degrees there. Overcast and 21 for Cleve. Wood now 25 degrees. Wyala 24. Port Augusta 26 degrees. Kadena partly cloudy and a max of 25. Port Piri cloudy with a high of 27. Similar conditions in Clare with 23 degrees there and showers and 29 in Broken Hill. Taking a look further through the week now, mostly sunny and warm throughout the region on Wednesday. Cooper Pedy will have a top of 33. 29 in Broken 
Broken Hill, tops of 30 for Port Augusta and Port Pirie. Thursday we'll see a continuation of those conditions. Woodland will have a top of 31, 28 in Wyler, 24 for Port Lincoln and 29 in Kadena and Adelaide. Temperatures will warm up slightly heading into the weekend. Cooper Pedy with the region's top of 37 degrees on Friday, 32 in Woodna and 29 for Kadena and Adelaide. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. It's back to you, John. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Monday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later and we'll be back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.